Hey there, welcome back, Maris here, and today we have full guide for Bloodline. And I'm going to show you 11 steps how you can easily go through the game without any issue, but not. Let's not waste your time, let's jump right in the game, and one by one I'll show you the points, but there's also a timestamps uh, for YouTube, so you can switch and in the description read all them through if you don't want to watch. It's fine by me. The most important part is that you learn something new right so uh yeah i just mentioned i'm turning down graphics are at the minimum because the game apparently just freezes up all the system and i can't record nothing so uh first thing that you want to make sure is do not rush the story and for story rushing there's two important things why you don't want to uh later in the game not at the beginning uh game will have and introduce you to pandemics so that's a kind of big issue, you want to be prepared for that. Also that is invol involved in the storyline. And the second thing, the story also involves you getting more people, which is problematic in Apocalypse, because uh, you need to have food and water and living shelters and a lot of situations. So do not rush it, otherwise you will run in some issues, right? I am showing you currently um, this is my hardest difficulty setup and you can and you should reach the uh, tower this is the quest where you can reach and prepare expeditions expeditions are amazing you need them but once storyline says hey bring back newcomers to the, your settlement you know no 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 be prepared you will do this but later on all right so this is the first step do not rush the story itself second point step is balance survival as i mentioned you need to prepare and fast forward is for, for a particular reason survival at the start without pandemic consists of two things water and food uh, and having balance means you make as much as you eat or a little bit more best case scenario don't look at these numbers the balance is just off it changes fluctuates it doesn't show the average it's, it's bad just having fast forward, you will see if the number in total, just, just notice, I have 140, if it after a few days drops below, it means I don't have a balance. And having a balance so I can fast forward, which I have this, in this background, you see that, mo uh, main reason why you want that is, and fast forward, is to have a research facility because then there is an option for you to either get a clan experience with in a thin air nothing uses this or get research points also out of thin air so this is the reason as you can see once you get a balance oh i actually want this once you have balance and you can fast forward even if it's slower basically this is unlimited clan experience and unlimited research points sounds already kind of cheaty yes it is okay let's jump to the next point because i don't want to push you to all grindy game that's why looting relics and textbooks are important first off you can do that in mostly in houses in, in on your own island but as and if and as you will get this expedition uh, running you will be able to also explore islands next to you i have all of them looted of course you get a lot of materials but key point is relics and textbooks why you ask why well because in the same research facility there are two other modes you need to unlock them that's you will find that uh, Normally, while using relics and textbooks, basically there are additional items and you run out of them eventually, but that boosts the clan experience and your search points beyond anything. So this is basically fast forward, extra leap, you know? So having those are crucial, so you don't have to waste a lot of playtime. Simple as that. Even when you run out of these, for example, I have run out of relics, I still get research just slower, right? All right, next is uh, gain spare search points. For example, I currently don't have much, 
but why you want that let me bring up the technology screen doesn't matter what's picked the problem is not problem one particular reason is if and at one point you will be surprised by pandemic and pandemic is treated into medical tent or maybe you need a bigger tent so if something happens you want to be able to immediately unlock well you can't see that i can't unlock this one because i don't have anything spare. so having a spare search point where you immediately can drop in for example i don't know i'm running out of wood for whatever reason i can unlock develop this technology and get ahead of my problem so this is just an idea to have a spare points not running them all the time uh, out right of course you want to develop through the um, technology tree and all that but just just spare some okay what if you have a lot of those relics you can get quite a lot of those research points. just don't be wasteful okay so next point is specialized clans remember in technology research center i mentioned uh, clan experience and research points so while we are currently and as i suggested to you with one clan only the first clan you start with um you can specialize it as well i did a little bit mistake because there is a limit how many specialization points you have and i didn't pay the name on a enough attention each of these can be level to level three so i have level three fortitude but i split here and actually i don't have fully developed erudition and also discipline so i should put all points here it doesn't matter to be fair in where you put those points because whenever you get the next clan you specialize them in another way so at the end you will have all special all specializations up to level three that's the that's the goal so specializing why i'm a little bit more explanation is needed this game does not fully give you that while you have expo, uh, specialization allows you to put specialized clan members in buildings i will show you in a moment but what is not that clearly shown is the difference and the difference can be found for example water purifiers you see the casual person unskilled and then this specialized but if you mouse over the button you see what is the benefit and it, this is a clear example where level one gives you a bonus x 2.5 then level two two times more but level three four times like you see it's really really beneficial to have a level three because the benefit is way more right per specialization point that's why you want to have maxed out whatever specialization plans you have right so at least you know where to look we'll move forward get the idea so for clans yeah you get the idea not put the same specialization for same clans that's why we having more clans actually is good because then you can have all the specializations covered all right a lot of explanation next point is unlocking upgrades as i mentioned even to save some research points what you want there is two ways to get more resources out of this game one is when you have for example kitchen that converts food uh, upgrading that will get more food but also require more risky food and so how to get more resources is either you upgrade the building either you upgrade the special like special speciality for your clans all right <laughs> so that's the thing uh this is important because at the first you have limited amount of clans that's one then limited amount of points you can put in specializations uh, probably pronounced a few times wrong but third they, they are limited and then the third option is only to while i can have speciality for them in making food what i can i can upgrade the building itself right even if i don't have this speciality which you by the way can look here i need this yeah expression my clan don't have it 
with, even without that, this unskilled worker will also make more food. So yeah, putting points here is really, really cru crucial. You will find out where to put upgrades, but I will give you a hint. Take a look at step two, balance survival. Survival, food and water, that's important. The rest of that is only after once you have survival aspect sorted out. All right, next is build infrastructure. Uh, this is basically moving forward to the point where you will want to get more people in your survival camp. Different clan, the same clan, doesn't matter. Infrastructure is something like, I, I call it like this. For example, I have forger house, not full workers in here because I don't have enough people. I have two water purifiers where actually there are four open spaces, right? And the same goes beyond. I have farm where I don't have people where not enough people for me, but the struct infrastructure is there. And for example, the same medical tent, actually two of them, this, oh, oh, the same is even earlier, okay. I want and I will build another uh, here. The infrastructure is basically open space. Whenever I get more people, I can immediately put them and get more water. And then another point, the new people will be immediately put to work at the farm and then afterwards in the baker station and somewhere here in the middle. So you see immediately it's prepared, not another way around where you get the people, you run out of food and then like, oh, I need to build more. No, no, no. You need to be prepared before you get more people. That's the thing. All right. Enough explanation. I try to get my videos shorter. <laughs> Next point is building peers. Oh yeah, I have them. Important important really important why let me kind of demonstrate if i can i don't know if i can it ties together with the next points but basically you need to have a peer so you can transfer people from and to island uh, i will quickly show in exploration there is these are two things district maker so you are able to build as districts on another island but while you can't transfer people but between those islands they are not fully utilized so having a pier which is only when you unlock scrap which you can see you can do this with the starting community will allow to transfer people and how it happens it's quite easy let me Take construction materials so you can build a storage house and this is how you, this is crucial part. Next points, we'll even add this up, but having a Pathfinder camp is one step. Second step, upgrade that to the storage, which is kind of already unlocking a new, um, what it's called, district but we are not done until we actually build another year and I will just demonstrate so you see how it will take one or two days of course they need to go to sleep but the thing is once you unlock this the game is easier than that because you get not only another set of um, food another island where to build another uh, buildings you can dest destroy and get resources out of it but most important let me just show you open up here and say okay these three guys you come back i don't need that island yet and they come back so peers are important why because Step number nine is divide and conquer. Yeah, I know it sounds a little bit more of a war uh, strategy, but it's simple as that. Clans do not always get along because of their different world views. Old new, uh, old world, new world, liberty, unity, you know, they have different points of view, so they do, do not get along. 
it is only the issue if they all have to live on one island, on one district. So what you do, whenever you get a new plan, what you do, you just easy take a peer and transfer the whole clan, exact all the members to the other island. And they will just be happy because both have separate ideas. If you don't know, probably you, if you're new in the gaming, uh, in this game, this storage and this storage, they are magically linked. Whatever is in there is also in there, which makes this game absolutely easiest and just ridiculous easily because whenever you build a new storage, it's poof, all the food, everything is just magically transferred here. That's why having extra districts is preferable and you need to have them. Making the separation, divide and conquer, easy as that. All the food, everything is right away already there. You can make it here, it will appear there. There, I can make all the farms and, uh, and this food can be gathered here. It will be automatically also available in, in, in other. And that's across all the game, quite easy. All right, two more points is watch the storage space. This is something I do know if I can show, but I'll try. Roof, for example, let me find some other building. I need some good example. And I don't have one yet. Sorry, sorry. Give me one second. There is, damn it, a buildings, for example. I can't find one. So, yes, this is the one I'm, I was looking for. You see, this particular building. I cannot destroy or restore it while there are still resources in it. It doesn't matter. I need a rope to open it. Bear with me. Even if I open up, these planks cannot be taken out. Why? Because look at this. My storage is full. So even if I send people and say, gather those planks, they will be, sorry boss, no room. So while those planks cannot be removed, this building cannot be removed or restored, which will le can lead to really big issues if you overproduce all the materials, basically all the search and emptying part will be not available, which means, for example, this island can be quite, where quite, um, let's say, sustainable to live on if I can remove and open up space for my buildings. And it cannot be done if I can't remove the planks. And not always, there is the thing. You can't just click and say, you know what? Half of these planks removed from the storage, just throw it out. There is no trashing. So you need to be aware if you reach the full storage, right? Just to be aware, this is more problematic than you can imagine because in the storyline also will be something like, you need to restore the building. In the building is material you cannot get out and that's a whole problem all right the next point is get people and repeat and repeat exactly at the first not first but second step because i have everything done already now i have a task to get more people i have already discovered more places where i can get more clans <laughs> just another thing and if I bring them here, for example, I have 13 now people. If I bring two, new, two these new clans, I will have twice as much. So my food, my balance will be destroyed. So getting back to the step two, balancing again, which means building infrastructure, which means also maybe learning, uh, specializing the new clans in different specialities even if they are placed here, maybe the next clan will be specialized in making food. So I will most likely build bakeries and everything around here. That's their specialty. They will make food over here. And these guys will make water over here. And then the third clan can make cement or, or concrete over here, you know? That's basically how the game is absolutely easily dominated. Okay, 19 minutes really fast video i'll throw in two more bonus tips for you that are not on the line that i will remove the, these ones tips are quite well tips the less tips more explanations 
if you open up a technology tree that you can see immediately from the beginning, uh, this is a crucial point. Baker station, small farm and mill. Until you get these three buildings, or in some other sense, small farm and insect hut, doesn't matter, you will get the connection between them. Without them, there's only two ways how you can make food. Uh, forager hut, so getting mushrooms and, and berries, and another one is fishing and then cooking the fish. These shellfish don't, don't bother, it's wasteful. Never ever in any sense of no, just, just forget about it. It doesn't exist, the balance is out. So, two ways, and these two ways have a little bit problem. I'll just quickly show you. Uh, you see, this forager picks up um, mushroom from mushroom clusters. They regenerate. But the thing is, you can deplete them. You see, for example, I have already below the half amount, which means even if I increase the people that pick them up, once they are depleted, the food is out. It's not coming from the source. And you can quite easily do it with a lot of effort to do it. Well, not a lot. And the same is true for fish. There are fish schools. If you have, I have all the time, all the people working there, and then upgrade fishing harbor and get even more fish out of it it will be depleted. And that runs in a little bit problem. That's why you don't want to rush people and everything. Um, which means mushrooms and fish are limited source. It regenerates, but it regenerates by certain amount. If you exceed and gather faster, you will eventually run out. Just boom, no more shrooms. Boom, no more food. Boom, balances out your people are dying. So only at the point when you have a farm, which makes uh, soybeans out of water, only then you have basically unlimited amount of food. So far, without farm, you will be limited. Uh, even if you get to the new island, again, there is mushroom cluster. If you deplete it, it's out. So this is not um, infinite amount of resource. Infinite amount of resource is water. As many these water uh, survival, water purifiers you can build and you can build a ton of it all the islands across everywhere and put people in there you can gather water and water is already for drinking and the second part of water dumped in the farms will be made into soybean then soybean can be made in floor and the floor can be baked into food. So yeah, this is important part the game doesn't tell you. Only later you realize, oh, that's why my people were constantly dying because I run out of food, because I depleted my few nodes, right? One tip, second tip, this will be faster. Uh, I already done it for you, I will just explain. You see these, these, these markers around here? Whenever you see a marker that says there's something interesting or there are people there, don't be afraid to send a search party. They will get in the building, you will have a pop-up that says, hey, there's people in there. And they always will ask, do you want them or not yet? If and when you choose not yet, few things happen. First of all, you get to know how many people are in there and what kind of clan they are. For example, here, for example, we have good neighbors, 15. Here we have another clan, Berkut, uh, 15. Here we have without clan. So these people can be merged into my clan. So that means I can have this speciality, 13 additional people. So you see, this is beneficial and they don't go anywhere. They sit there and wait until you are ready to get there. So another just a tip, so you can see what clan and how much. As you can see, I scouted around, built my infrastructure, followed my 11 steps, and now I'm, I can fast forward and get again this rolling. All right. Yes, I managed to quit, get it quite short. Uh, these tips, 
Let me know what you think. If you have a question, what about a uh, law committee and laws? I believe you can easily skip them. Not easily, but you can skip them. They are additional bonus. Pick what you want. Be smart. Check what's there. See where the tree splits. Sometimes when you pick one, you cannot go other way. You, it can't be reverted. And in other ways, there are some branches where you can uh, pick from both bench. Just read carefully, right? Otherwise, yeah, this is the hardest difficulty. The game is absolutely not hard. Follow the steps and you will get through it in no time and survive and thrive. And remember, come back for the new video then. All right, cheers.